This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. If anyone would like to ask Roy Glatstein any questions, um, I have one, but I'm going to allow people to go first. Do you have any, any questions at all? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys at the back, I'm going to keep you behind at the end if you don't stop talking. It's not okay. Does God interfering in people who are planning against the Jews not remove that free will to an extent? Could you? I, I didn't catch what you said. Does God interfering in the plans of people who hope to crush Jews not interfere in their free will by twisting their plans? Good question. Good question. Does God interfere in the, to frustrate the plan of man? Sometimes he does, and sometimes he doesn't. Can he? Yes. Can he choose to retreat? Absolutely. Is it a violation of their free will? Yes and no. Because sometimes the free will of a king or a leader of a nation has been suspended entirely once he assumes the position of king. There's an idea the Navi teaches us that the king or the leader of a nation upon assuming that position is now an official puppet of the Almighty. So upon assuming that position that individual may have lost their free choice to begin with. So God's interfering in the choices of kings and officers is a different level of hashgacha than the way he interferes or doesn't in man's regular activities. But there's an idea that it is more difficult, and I'll explain what I mean by that, for God to interfere in man's choices than in the regular working of the world. What that would mean is, for example, if somebody's walking in a dangerous forest and there are dangerous animals there, God will sooner protect that person from an animal because he doesn't have to f- interfere in anyone's free will than protect them from someone who has an evil scheme to harm them. But God could certainly save somebody from any situation. It's a very complex and important question, but that's, in a nutshell, what we say, al regal achas. Sami. Um, so you, you spoke about, obviously, the top star of it. And I was just wondering, and seven eight years prior to that, when you said that God will ensure the Jewish people have gone through many periods in concentration camps, and then they will be murdered, and it's like, well, if, there's, if God intervened then to save two, three, four million, why couldn't he have done it in the past? And they're like, why choose then? It's like we... I'm not, I'm not disputing that what he did then is not a miracle, it completely is. But there's many other opportunities where he could have showed his power and hoped that he could get it. Such as, uh, okay, uh, look, you're asking a, a very challenging and difficult question. My own grandfather was in Auschwitz, and he was actually on the selection line. And he was literally put into the gas chamber. He wasn't selected for life, he was selected for death. And at the very last moment, he was pulled out by his hair and his life was saved by a Nazi officer who came out of nowhere and just pulled him out. And my grandfather said it was an open miracle. So yes, people ask, where was God in the Holocaust? But my grandfather says, where was he? He was at the doorstep of the crematoria and he pulled me out. So there are very challenging things that we see in this world. On the one hand, in our own lifetime, we just saw on October 7th, terrible atrocities that were perpetrated against our people. But I want to share with you a very important perspective. You know, the IDF has now been fighting for many, many months. That means it's a very formidable opponent. That means they're well-armed, they're trained, they have vicious intent, they have a whole network of tunnels, and after five months, we still haven't defeated them, which means... Think about what they could have done. Think about what they were capable of perpetrating. There are tens of thousands of them. Think about what they were capable of doing. And it was only that limited number. Now, I I don't mean to be callous. Even one Jew is a whole world by itself. But they could have perpetrated (laughs) terrible numbers. So... It was a terrible atrocity, but was someone looking out for us? There's no question that was also an open miracle that what they did was limited to that extent. Yeah. Ryan, you want to... I just 
in a way, disagree with what you're saying. So you're saying that because Hashem was looking out for us, there was only X amount. You're saying it could have been much more, but surely if someone was truly looking out for us, that even those people that have already sadly passed away wouldn't have in the first place. You can remember that before the war, Israel, Israel and the Jewish people were first divided. You're saying that a long time before the war. You can say that the Jewish people become reunited. So if the Jews are reunited, we have to lose. Yes. Yeah. Every, every, every bad thing to happen, you can't just say it's good because there wasn't more bad instead of bad things to happen. So, yeah. Also, I, I agree with Ryan. I shall not see the bigger picture. <laughs> These, these are massive topics, and I think longer for the Q and A session we've got this afternoon. And what I'd suggest, Hans Rabbi Hill, on a follow-up JS lesson, it would be very important to have these conversations about suffering. I just just ended something interesting that happened to me last week, and I, I think I may have told some of you about this. So this is remarkable. I just called up. We're talking a lot about Hashkoch and Protest, about everything's for a reason. <laughs> Sorry, I'll wait for the boys in the back row. Unfortunately, you're going to be staying behind afterwards. This isn't okay. This, isn't, this really is not okay. Just to end, this whole idea of Purim, Hashkoch, things, that, things happen for a reason. So I phoned up American Express last Thursday, a week ago, because there was a transaction on my credit card that didn't seem to make sense to me. So I fell on American Express, and for those of you who have bank accounts, I'm sure you've had this feeling when you've been put on hold, put on hold five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, finally I get through to someone. Good afternoon, American Express, Aaron speaking, how may I help you? And the voice, something about the voice, I said, hi, I just need to question, what's your name? My name's Johnny Golka. Rabbi Golka! <laughs> like, one second, who is this? This was a guy that I was in Masada Kedush in, I officiated at his wedding a couple of years back, he works for American Express, <laughs> and he randomly picked up my call at the other end of the, of, the, of the phone. It was literally out of nowhere. Now, we were discussing afterwards, we spoke later that evening. The funny bit was, he couldn't even help me because he said, as soon as I know who you are, I'm legally not allowed to help you. He had to put me back on hold. So I, went, <laughs> I went back on hold. But he said to me later that evening, we spoke on the phone, it was almost like a message from Hashem. He got married two years ago, he lives in a non religious area. He hadn't connected with his Judaism. He was saying, you know, I really need to connect with my rabbi. And I was put through to him, the rabbi who married him, put through to him. Who knows why? Why am, I, why am I ending with this story? The point is, we don't have all the answers, but we just need to try and wake up and smell the coffee, smell the hashkaf in our own life. And I think that for me, today's Rosh Chodesh Shadah, one of the big messages of Purim is we don't have all the answers. We don't know why bad things happen. We don't know all the details, but we do know that our Baruch Hu knows. Hashem has a plan. And I think that very much ties in. When our enemies try to destroy us, they end up being the ones that sometimes end up saving us as well. It's quite remarkable to see. I want to just conclude with one question to you, I guess, and for me. If I'm going home this evening and I want to watch one of your shirim online, out of the 10,400, which one should I watch and how do I access it? That's a question for everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> You could you could binge watch them, right? You know. Um, well, Purim is coming. I would suggest Purim Fest 1947. Purim Fest 1947. Google that with Rabbi Gatstein. You'll find it on <laughs> Torah Anytime. Torah anytime. Okay. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.